And hello, this is Scotty Sykes with Sykes & Company. Today, I'm going to be talking about the Employee Retention Tax Credit for pharmacies, and this is for 2021. We already have another video for 2020 because the rules are, are different for 2020 versus 2021. So this video here is regarding 2021 Employee Retention Tax Credit. Just a quick disclaimer. Uh, this is informational only. Please consult with your advisors on determining eligibility here uh, and determining whether and how to uh, file and, and claim this credit if you are eligible. So the Employee Retention Tax Credit, again, this was in 2020 under the CARES Act. This was passed in the CARES Act. And then in the Consolidated Appropriations Act at the very end of 2020 allowed pharmacies to go back and pretty much claim this credit because originally if you had the PPP, you couldn't get this credit. However, they changed that again under the Consolidated Appropriations Act at the end of last year and, and allowed pharmacies, if eligible, to go back and claim this credit for 2020. So uh, check out the other video to, to learn more about that. But, but for 2021, the American Rescue Plan Act expanded this credit even further. So it extended the employee retention tax credit for all of 2021. And uh, certain small or startup businesses can also qualify here. So that's that's a that's great news here. Uh, but this credit is very can be very significant. So this is something you have to take a look at in your pharmacy on whether you're going to qualify or not. Uh, but pharmacies can qualify. Even if you are an essential business like a pharmacy, you can qualify here. So uh, keep that in mind. Now, there is not a lot of guidance whatsoever on this credit for 2020 or 2021. And again, they're different credits, essentially. But uh, for 2020 and 2021, there, there's two notices out there for 2021. It's notice 2021-23. It's about 100 pages. And that's going to be the one that is uh, going to be able to lead you through determining your eligibility, uh, so on and so forth. But uh, that's really the only guidance out there. There are some FAQs on the IRS website as well, um, but those do not have uh, authority. Uh, they're more like safe harbors. Um, it's just something to keep in mind there. But so what is the employee retention tax credit? This is a refundable tax credit against certain employment taxes equal to 70% of the qualified wages an employer pays to employees after uh, 2020 and before 2022. So essentially 2021. And each employee, for each employee, 70% of qualified wages up to $10,000 per quarter uh, can be eligible. So that means a maximum credit amount per employee of $28,000 for 2021. So if you have 10 employees, for example, you qualify the whole year and uh, you're paying over $40,000 in wages, you know, you're going to have $28,000 per person there of credit. So this credit is, again, very substantial when we start running numbers here. And this is why you have to take a look and see if this applies to your pharmacy. So, you, you know, what businesses qualify? You must carry on a trader business in 2020 or 2021 and meet one of the following two criteria. You have to have a full or partial suspension of the operation of your trader business um, or a significant decline in gross receipts. Now, the option one there may be something pharmacies can look into for 2020. Again, I'm going to reference the 2020 video for that. But for 2021, it's going to be safe to say that many pharmacies just are not going to qualify there, um, being that uh, you guys were required to be open essentially during this whole COVID. Uh, so for 2021, the focus shifts more on a significant decline in gross receipts. Um, and so, again, for 2020, pharmacies generally do, are not going to qualify under one and two for the 2020 rules. Although there are going to be some that do, so you have to you have to take a look at that. But for 2021, I think we're going to have a few more qualify because of the decline in gross receipts threshold has changed. And a decline in gross receipts for 2021, uh, the qu the quarterly gross receipts decline needs to be more than 20 percent. Uh, on there it says revenue. It should be gross receipts. The gross receipts decline needs to be more than 20%. Gross receipts is gonna be very similar to revenue, 
but there's going to be a couple adjustments in there as well, including PPP if you did get PPP forgiveness there. Um, so you're going to compare your 2021 quarterly gross receipts and compare that to the same quarter for 2019. If there's more than a 20% drop, uh, you may qualify. So that's something to, to definitely take a look at in your pharmacy. Um, now, there is a special rule for 2021. So you may use the gross receipts in the prior quarter versus the same quarter in 2019. So if it's second quarter 2021, you can use second quarter 2021 versus second quarter 2019, or you can use first quarter 2021 versus first quarter 2019. So you have two options there to see if you can qualify under the gross receipts rule for 2021. And, you know, there, there may be some pharmacies out there that have a 20% drop. And, and that 20% drop in gross receipts, there is no requirement that decline is due to COVID-19. Uh, there's, there's absolutely nothing that COVID-19 has anything to do with it, really. If you have a drop in, of 20%, uh, you, you, you could qualify. Um, you need to be consistent with how you're, you're determining your gross receipts, uh, et cetera. You, you know, that, so, so you have to be careful there, but um, something to definitely consider. Now, affiliated groups and rules are used to determine revenue to decline or gross receipts to decline. So if you have several pharmacies and, and you're an affiliated group or a controlled group, you need to know that. If you are, there's several tax implications from that, but there's also implications here for the credit that you have to combine your group and see if there's a revenue or a gross receipts decline there or not. Uh, if you have over 500 employees, there are limitations to consider as well. Uh, here's just a quick example. So a pharmacy's got a significant significant decline in gross receipts. Uh, the pharmacy qualifies for two quarters. They have eight employees. Their qualifying wages uh, are on the left column or the left side there. The wage amount, which is 70% of the wage column, uh, is the credit amount. So you can see here uh, the pharmacy credit amount is going to be close to $70,000 here. Uh, and again, this is some serious money. This is reasons why you need to look at this. Now, some important considerations. Uh, the IRS is, is actually checking these manually. The, their, their systems are down for, for this credit. So they're manually checking these. So you definitely want to have your facts, circumstances, and gross receipts uh, well documented that prove your eligibility. They have extended the audit uh, statute of limitations for this credit. And so they're going to be checking these, I'm sure, and auditing auditing these. So you have to be careful here. Uh, make sure you're eligible. Uh, I mentioned the affiliation rules. Uh, those are the two notices you'll see there. Notice 2021-20 and 2021-23. Really, between that, those notices and the FAQs on the IRS website, that's all the information available on this credit and what you need to know. So if you have questions, uh, that's going to be your best source of information. Um, you're going straight to the source there. Now, I, I mentioned there's no clarification on PPP, including in gross receipts, if not forgiven. So if you have not gotten that PPP forgiven yet, does that account for gross receipts in that uh, that calculation for your decline. And that's not clear yet. So that's an unknown. Um, there's no clarifications on owners qualifying. Uh, there's there's two lines of thought that says owners do qualify. Uh, there's another line of thought that says they don't. So that is an unknown. Uh, you're going to claim this by filing uh, your payroll tax return form. Uh, 941, or you can get an advanced credit on Form 7200 if you are uh, um, applying before your uh, tax return due date for your 941. Of course, you need to consider this impact, the impact of this credit for other relief provisions and tax credits. For example, last year, the PPP and the ERTC could not overlap, so you had to plan around that. Uh, just be careful that there's other things that impact uh, that use wages for credits and so on. So you have to be careful not to 
overlap those or double dip, if you will. And lastly here, you need to watch out for people that are going to sell these credits. This is going to be more, you're going to hear more and more and more about the ERTC. Uh, and you're going to have more and more groups selling this that, oh, yeah, you qualify, you qualify, everybody qualifies. Uh, just be careful there. There's going to be a lot of people out there selling and, and charging these uh, pretty large fees uh, to get you this credit. So just be careful there. And uh, you can always uh, reach out to Sykes, ask Sykes at Sykes-CPA.com to get our opinion or, or any recommendations on someone who may be reputable. But that uh, concludes the quick ERTC for 2021. Check those gross receipts. Talk to your advisor. See if you qualify. Some big money's on the table here for 2020 and 2021 potentially. So this is definitely something to, to take a look at.